it's always about the intention. If the intention of I'm buying this car to get views and make money, that's the wrong intention to have and it's going to come across the wrong way to, the, to serious people and serious people that have money. And, and just like you said, the people that have money want a solution and they just want their problem solved and they want it solved now and they don't care about what you have or what you do. Welcome to the Grant Owen Podcast, where we explore the world of entrepreneurship. Join us as we dive into the nitty gritty of what it takes to start, grow, and scale a successful business. We're on a mission to share our experiences, failures, insights, and advice with others. Whether you're just starting out in your entrepreneurial journey, or you're looking to take your business to the next level, tune in and join the conversation about what it takes to succeed in the world of business. We going for Welcome to the Grand Owen Podcast. It is a pleasure to have you today. As always, please like, share, subscribe. That's always helpful. But the thing that's most important for me and the most important thing for you and your community is that if you get benefit from this cast with this episode with Nick Rogers, if you learn something or if you know of someone else that would benefit from this, send it to that one person. That's all I ask is that the people that need to hear this get the value from it. I appreciate you. There's people that have liked this. There's people that have commented and shared. Um, and I appreciate all the feedback. But the thing that's most important is that the person that needs to hear this, hears it. So, um, yeah, if you benefit from it, please send it to that person. Nick, thanks for joining me, dude. I'm, I'm actually, like, super pumped to talk to you, and thanks for, thanks for making the time to, to chat with me. Absolutely, bro. I'm super glad to be here. It's, uh, glad you asked me. Super cool. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, let's dive in. So, so the big thing, that there's an accolade that I love starting with because it adds authority to, to what you're about to say and what we're about to talk about, which is that you've driven... $12 million in sales, both to your personal brand and th for your clients through digital marketing. Um, you're a digital marketing expert in that sense. Yeah, l let me clarify. Like, that is not just my personal brand, but just like outreach I've done, stuff yeah. like that, yeah. my theme pages, et cetera, combined with the client sales that we've brought from yep. their personal brands uh, and, and their brands in general. I think it's closer to like 12.7, 12.8 now. That's awesome. That's incredible. So yeah, either way, super impressive because a lot of people, especially people that are first interested in like the agency space, interested in the S SMMA or like digital marketing in general. And then there's also like, there's a whole slew of people that just like are doing digital marketing by themselves. A lot of the people that are going to be listening to this are like online coaches or people that um, probably are trying to drive traffic to their own stuff. And they just have no idea how. And so you've yep. been exposed and you've tested all these different things. And now you have Launch Socials, which helps people with these things, both in a done-for-you process and in a done-with-you process. So just tell me, like, before we dive into some of your, some of your takes here, because I have a lot of questions about your takes and your opinions on the space. Sure. What, give me, can you give me, like, a, a, a three-minute rundown of essentially, like, what led you to di digital marketing? Like, was there a trait that, like, you were yeah, like, yep, yeah, yeah. this is just who I am, and I, I just it, I kind of fell into it naturally. Did you start with the theme pages? Like, how did you get started, and how did it progress? Yeah, I mean, so, like, it all started with I wanted to make money. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's just genuinely what it was. Fair. Um, there wasn't there wasn't any, like, I don't think there's a trait specifically. Um, I, I do consider myself more of a, I'm crafty, and I'm definitely a marketer and stuff. I definitely consider myself, though, more of an operator, entrepreneur. Okay. Um, it's just what I am, like building systems, et cetera. And I think I could do it in any business. I think yep. it's more of like a, a people management thing and setting the right expectations and stuff like that. It's like more of my strong suit, especially sales. Like sales is like yeah, seriously one of my strong suits is the confidence, the ability there. But how I got started with things, I'll, I'll touch on that and I'll touch on you know, how I think about traits and everything. How I got started was I was, you know, I dropped out of college at 18 in 2017 after two months there. Nice. I start selling cars. Um, I need money, so I start selling cars at a local dealership. I cold call them, whatever. I'm like, yo, like, uh, cold email. Like, I want to <laughs> join. I didn't know what cold calling or cold email was at the time. I'm 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, so I start selling, selling cars there to get money, and I see all these kids online drop shipping, and I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> they're selling products. They're selling products from China, and they're scamming. not touching it. They're not ever scamming. looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't scamming. It was just like 30-day delivery time points, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I don't understand how markets work or anything like that. And I'm just like, yeah, like, this is the thing. That makes a lot of sense to me. They really sold me on the dream. So, <laughs> so I started doing it, and it did okay. I got some sales here and there, like whatever. But I'm doing all these things, and, and there, there's, you know, you got to build your website. you got to source the product and all these things. 
And I'm like, why don't I just focus on one? And I, what I noticed in that point, like that kind of happened at the same time, like focusing on one and just doing one thing, kind of happened at the same time I'm, I realized I'm sending all these Instagram pages, all this money to promote my products on my stores. I'm like, why don't I just become the Instagram pages? So mm-hmm. what I do is I start growing uh, Instagram pages, and I get one that takes off 100K followers first four months. And I'm like, that to me is like, I cracked this. I got attention. I'm doing good. Like people yeah. like this. I started making decent amount of money. It was like five to ten k per month just from that, just from the single Instagram page. And from there, like another six to eight months, six to nine months go on, and I kind of had linked up with one of my business partners at the time, and we were trying to start this like engagement group for theme pages and Instagram pages and whatever. I'm like, why don't we just start an agency? Excuse me. <clears throat> Why don't we just start an agency? Why don't, why don't we just, uh, you know, work together and grow personal brands and do do all that? And that's what we did. So so we pitched a couple people, and we started taking uh, a monthly retainer fee and a percent of their sales at the end of 2019. What? So if, sorry. And, what did you start out with? Out of curiosity, just for <laughs> like, what did you start with for your monthly retainer fee? How, what, what, like, like how 2K. low was it? Yeah, it was super it was like low. 2K super low. Yeah, with like. 15 or 20 percent or something yeah 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 we're yeah, taking yeah. a decent percent but we weren't making them a lot of money we didn't understand all the mechanics of everything at the time you just, I was wanted, just learning. Was, was, did someone tell you to pitch that amount with because like even doing like a percentage like no nope. like telling you like i, I want to kick back on revenue like that's a that's that's pretty savvy for came up starting with out yeah that's pretty savvy for somebody just came up with it yeah. to be honest yeah i didn't i didn't <laughs> i didn't know and i've always like it kind of comes back to like the entrepreneur like ceo type of thing yeah i've always just been kind of like a deal maker if that makes sense. I've yep. always just been like, I kind of know how to, I, d- I don't know, it's like some natural ability, whatever. I was just kind of had it. Even like as a little kid, my mom would always tell me like, I would go to everyone in the room, try to like convince them, you know, like yeah. let me eat this piece of cake or whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's like, no, you can't have it. I would just like sales pitch everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so, so we started doing that. I was taking like 2K a month plus a couple percent. We had one, signed two clients get them great results. All we knew how to do at the time was grow. Didn't know anything about sales systems, didn't know anything about products, didn't know anything about offers. We just knew how to grow Instagram accounts really, really fast and make really good content. That's what we knew, that's what I knew. And we did that. And over time, it developed and we had to learn different things and stuff. And early 2022 is when Launch Socials was kind of born, right? So we had the agency, Launch Socials was then born. The goal was to build a consulting product to feed the agency, as in, I want to consult people to get them to the point where they are the ideal client yeah. to work together, done for you, one on one at my agency, yep. where we do everything for them. Where at that point, our retainers, I don't know, we were still charging low retainer then. Now I charge eight k a month plus ten percent. That's like the deal I pitch. Love it every love time. It. Yeah, um, that was that was like lower at that point. And I know I'm going longer than your three minutes and not. No, I love it. I this is good. The details. Yeah, well, I like the tactics um, too. Yeah, I think that. At that point, you know, it was like, okay, let's feed, let's feed the agency. Let's build a consulting product that feeds the agency, so we have the ideal customers for it. Yeah, let me let me ask about that. So, your agency was it was it create was it like short form? Like, what kind of content were you creating for people? We build Instagram personal brands for yeah. people in the make money space. Yep. So, That's but it. does that mean That's like you were you out there shooting content? Was it written? Like, what kind of content was it? So we would tell them what to record, what to like, how to what to record, how gotcha. to record. Here's a script. Here's the title. Record it. Send it back to us. We'll edit it. We'll post it. Gotcha. 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 We'll we'll basically do all the captions, everything. We'll we'll manage the stories. Um, we'll make sure the sales are on point and stuff like that. But we didn't know anything about sales processes, etc. Yeah. At, at all. So we started building that stuff, and we get it kind of going, and it's kind of working. But we still really are just a content agency at the end of the day. Yeah. We, we do get people a lot of results in regards to money and making sales, and, and we do build some funnels and stuff like that. But we aren't I, – I was definitely super good at it. I had done all of it, helped build courses, build offers, et cetera. But it wasn't my strong suit until late 2021. Yeah. Um, and then in 2022, that's when it became – like a real thing where that, that stuff was happening. And that's when we started the consulting. So the goal was to use the consulting to grow the agency. Yeah. started growing, growing, growing. My business partner from the agency ended up leaving the company. Just wasn't what he wanted to do anymore in regards to work together. Um, he felt like he could do it on his own. So cool. He went and did it on his own. No problem. Um, and for, from there, I kept 
the agency alive a little bit, but my main focus then turned to launch socials. Let's build a consultant. I kind of lost to a degree, like me, me being vulnerable here, I kind of lost the original thought of we're going to use launch socials to grow the agency. I was like, oh, this is the vehicle. This is the thing. Yeah. This is what I should do. And I tried a bunch of different ways of upsells and da, da, da. And recently I've came back to the fact that agency for me and in this regard is the correct way to do it. So wait, okay, so that, I want to ask about this because that's, let me stop yeah. you there. Cause so like, there's a lot to go off of here. I want to ask you, that's a hot take. That's a hot take to say that an agency model where there's a service being provided is what you want to do. Even if it's in the way I do it, in the way I do it, not, not necessarily what I want to do, but it gets me to my goals. Okay. In, in the model. And I'll explain. With the agency model, one, I feel more confident because I'm not just teaching people. I know all of it, but I'm not just teaching and consulting people. I'm hands dirty doing it, not just for myself to sell the consulting yeah. right, on my personal brand. Yep. I'm doing it hands dirty for people. So it makes me more confident. We're yep. testing different things. We know what's working. We're in the market actually doing things. Yep. So it allows us to bring more insights. Additionally, it makes people trust us more. Sure. Just makes people trust us more. Sure. And we can sell more of the consulting. We can sell more of the stuff on the lower end. Yep. And we can share the results that we're getting on the front end for those guys to yeah. sell our consulting and sell yeah. our other stuff. Essentially, so, the, the people that you continually have on as a service are your test subjects that only support your ability to sell more, only support your ability to stay relevant, only support your ability to teach on new things as they come, right? And then it's great cash flow. Yeah. Well, it's just but, good. so that my question is like from a scalable model, right? If you said, if you were to say like, okay, I don't want to do the consultant thing anymore. I just want to do, uh, I just want to do the agency. How, how big can you make a done for you agency? You can make it pretty big. Like, like I, I used to think an agency like is like tough to scale. You can make it. I, I've can seen you people get do more like than, a mill a month. I know, but can you, really? Cause I feel like, can you really get more than 15 clients? At a, at a month. If you have the right systems, procedures, operations, and processes. And it's something I was just talking about on a coaching call, consulting call, whatever, with, uh, with, with a group, was there's this, there's this thing you have to go through where you start out as a hustler. You know, I started the agency. I started the pages as a hustler. I was hustling for money. Yeah. And then you're like, well, if I want this thing to be long-term and I want to scale to the numbers I want to scale to, and we can talk about that in a second, like yeah. what goals look like and – the other layers, the consulting, because um, I want to finish that. But you have to put people in place. Yeah. You have to. And when you put people in place, you can also support a bigger load. Yep. You know, if it's just me writing for clients, I can do five. If it's me and our two main writers and a team of people editing videos and all that, we can support 15. And then it's like, well, if we can do it for 15 and we can get these guys good at writing and these guys on the process, it might take a while. But yeah. we can add people. Now, yeah. my goal isn't to, to grow the consulting. My goal is to have the, or sorry, the coach, uh, not the agency, the, coaching, the, the agency. My goal isn't to grow the agency. We're at like six people right now for clients. We'll probably grow it to 10 and cap it. Just because for us, we have way higher upside on the consulting and we have yeah. way higher upside there. And, and it's more scalable 80, in that regard. 80K a month with 10% on whatever you drive. That's incredible. That's awesome. You're yeah, we're, we're making, making a couple hundred thousand yeah. you know, from that. You know, 10% of however many sales we get them per month. You've got 10 people making 100 to 500 a month. You know, yep. We're, yep. we're big numbers. Um, th that's like the, the sweet spot for me. That's something that's like sustainable, scalable, whatever. I'm not running around with my head cut off type of thing. That, yeah. That's good. Don't think the agency lasts like, you know, will I be doing agency in 10 years from now? Probably not. Probably not. But the consulting will always likely be there yeah. but i'm using it as a tool to grow and help the people that we're currently helping right now yeah. and get to that level and we can talk about like what long-term goals look like in like 10 years like what i think but additionally i kind of want to like finish it off where to me i think for the first time ever in the past month here i have the completed product stack that i've been trying to have for the past like four years yeah um i think it's tough sometimes to i'm not saying business partners are bad i like I, I've liked working with both of my previous business partners. Like, it's been great. And Logan and I are still really great friends, right? This is my previous business partner for anyone watching. Doesn't know he's actually on this podcast. You guys should go watch yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think that the, sometimes visions collide. Yeah. And like the way I would do B2B done for you is probably different than the way he would do it, yep. just in the way that we work. Yep. And I think for the first time, the thing that 
I'm excited about is like I have the completed product stack. I know what we're offering for free. I know what we're offering for like a paid monthly subscription. I know what we're offering our consulting level. I know what we're offering at the agency and everything goes and feeds the agency. It's a very logical sequence yep. and it's very, very simple. And, yep. and that's what I am excited about in regards yep. to digital and marketing I, and like the business I'm building and stuff like that. And I'm going to be frank about it. I think the, the, biggest, the biggest driver for it, I think your lead magnets are better than everybody else's. I think. I think I, I think your free value that you've given uh, in content, you your content isn't very educational. You 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 test stuff, you grow, you you test your principles, and then you educate a little yeah. bit. But you test your principles. I think, uh, but I think you have this like uh, this this doc that you put out of like phase one of like brand strategy, right? I yeah. I haven't seen. I've paid for courses. I haven't seen many courses that are better than that yeah. that brand doc. And I just think like. That's that. that's really interesting that like you've invested so much in the free value and I see you're investing more on the free discord and stuff, the free community and the newsletter and stuff like that where that's probably going to drive a lot of the wider value to then get you that like if you're saying 10 clients like there's no shot based on your audience that you can't upsell to 10 or exactly. you can't you can't target just by your metrics alone. That's the, that's, the that's the goal, right? Like I would I want it to be unreasonable that we would it would be unreasonable to fail like yeah. incredibly unreasonable for us to fail there, yep. there should be almost a zero percent chance that we don't make x amount per month yep um and, and that to me is the free value front end and then obviously that that pushes into everything and actually we just redropped this 119 pages now and like we can talk about the the free discord in regards to how i view like nurturing and stuff like that yeah because i don't want to i'm not here to pitch you know i'm just here to have a cool <laughs> conversation right but um yeah to me the 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 lead magnets and the nurturing yeah is what's driven the vast majority of sales and it's probably the biggest lesson that i've learned in the past year or two is like how can i give someone specific targeted advice that they pay other people multiple thousands of dollars for how can i give that to them for free and then yeah. sell them on the implementation of that yeah. information yeah it's alex ramosi give away the secret sell the implementation it's it's awesome. I love it. Well, so here's the, here's my hot take question. I want to start with right. Here's here's my. I hate agencies. I hate them. Cool. I, I think I don't like hiring agencies either. <laughs> like, and I I own an agency, and I hate agencies. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the I I just think the model itself is is tough because usually, and this is like I I I, I have you on the podcast, and I had Logan on the podcast because I affirm what you guys are doing. I think what you guys are doing is solid. I think your product is good. I think what you teach is right. I think the way you run things is correct. I think 95% of other people don't do it this way. Sure. I, a lot of times people over, over promise, that. under deliver, right? A lot of times people like tend to sell more and, and, and usually they sell a metric and the back end of what they, pro they deliver on is just like super flawed. And it's just, I, there's just such a lack of integrity uh, in the space. And I think for, for business owners particularly, like, uh, if you're promising views and you get views and you do a three month contract or a six month contract or a nine month contract, right? Like that's awesome. You've done that. But I still think business owners need permanent solutions. Uh, and it might be that like yeah. my ICP does and maybe yours doesn't. Maybe when you're product driven or you're B2B and it's like more e-commerce focused, doesn't need a permanent solution. You just need to drive enough traffic to build that initial base. But in my mind, I think like business owners when creating content, ultimately if I do my job right, like one of my clients that did my job right and she needs her own in-house team because to do what she wants to do to scale to what she wants to scale to, I could charge her yep. 20 K a month, but I'm not going to do that because at the end yep. of the day, she needs to spend 10 to 15 on it's her own such, team dedicated to it. So this is probably one of the main reasons I stopped doing the agency at the start, which is like, Oh, I'm just going to place people. But what I realized is there's levels into like we we're, we're going to try to place content marketers into people's businesses. Okay. Instead of doing the agency. And we did it for a little bit. And the thing that was hard for us was finding the right people and, and trying to do that offer at scale. What do we got to charge? You got to charge like 20k to place a content marketer. Cool. But like we need to go sell a bunch of those for it to make sense. I'd rather get someone on an agency um, now that I look at it, I'd rather get someone on an agency subscription paying me 20k a month. And then when they're ready for an in-house team, have the conversation with them. Just be open and honest with them from the start. Look, dude, this probably won't be forever. This will be like for a year. And you'll reach a point where you're like, dude, I don't want to write, and I don't want to stroke a 50K check every month to Nick and the team. I yeah. don't want to do that because I can yeah. hire a team for that. 
And I know that's happening, and it's going to happen because it's happened to me before. So I have that conversation up front at the start with them. Yeah. No, because I, I tried to do the placement route. I was like, oh, agencies are no good. Da, da, da. I did marketing on that, right? What, is, was, what like, was your marketing? What matter. was your marketing? It was just like join Launch Socials. We'll, we'll help you build the team, stuff like that. We, we tested that angle. Um, but I realized that the agency is like an in-between now between the – like the consulting side and then mm-hmm. the actual placement of an in-house team and managing it yep. because what they, what they need is they need scale. You can yeah. go build an in-house team when you're at two, one, two, three hundred a month. It's like, boom. Okay. Now you have perfect. You have the cash flow for it. Cool. Go and do it. And, um, it's actually, so, so basically I like to, I'll, I'll finish this point. I like to have the conversation with them about it and help them build that team for a fee when it it's like comes time, they're like, dude, I don't want to pay you this anymore. And I'm like, yeah. I get it, of course. So like, let's build an in-house team. We can do some consulting, management, et cetera, to make sure it's smooth. Whatever, we'll reduce our role. Boom, done. Yeah, that's typically where I go with it, and that's where the market's going. That you look at guys like Cole Gordon. That's what Cole Gordon does. You know, he does the placement and stuff. There's in that market, we have one, right? We have a fractional sales manager on our team at Launch Socials. Yeah. They fractionally manage our sales team. We pay them a fee plus a tiny percent every single month. Yep. We've already had the conversation. I'm like, guys, I know how this goes. I've always been on the other side of this conversation. And now I'm on this side of the conversation. It's like, look, I, when, when we're at X amount per month, like, I'm not going to want to pay that fee to you. Is there a continuation plan of like, can we place a proper team in place? And yes, yeah. there is. And that, that's really the – an agency is the in-between ground between hustling and becoming a real business. Yeah. Hundred percent. You need I agree. That's for that. That's why I agree. And then you want to. I think. I think agencies what? like the only purpose of it is to get a specific result, or to give you the systems so that you can do it yourself and have your own team. Like, if I pay an agency, right, or if I, it's the same thing with kind of like a coach, a coaching model, right? Yep. If I pay for a coach, or if I pay to learn from somebody, I want them to either do it for me, and teach me, right, or get me a result so that I don't have to worry about it ever again. Or Correct. just give me the systems so that I can then do it. Yep. And that's like the long term. Like I just don't think that's why I'm saying like from an MRR per- perspective, like the churn on like the LTV of an agency client is uh, you. I'm sure you can make it great, but like it's just I just can't see it going past two years. I can't see it going past two years to have an agency client that long. It just depends on what people want, you know. In in. In all reality, someone that signs with an agency, at least in my space, and what I do specifically, someone signs with an agency, they're already making good money, and they want to make way more good money, and they want to be a legitimate business long term. Mm -hmm. And that type of person is a person that's going to use an agency to get them there, and they're not even going to realize it up front. They're going to realize it once they get there that they don't want to pay that money, and then they'll want an in-house team, and they'll need an in-house team. And oftentimes, I'll just have the conversation up front of like, guys, this is what it's going to be. We have the solution for every element of this. I haven't had that solution before. And that's why I was like, I'm, I'm excited right now because we, we have that solution now. We can do all these things now where we go and do placements and, and whatever to, to go build an in-house team. Because that's like the, the elevated metric on top of the agency. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Like yeah. It's a stepping stone for most people. If you're building the real business long term, it's a stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, so, so here's, I, have you mostly worked with like money Twitter guys? Have you mostly worked with like young, young entrepreneurial types? Um, not necessarily just money Twitter guys, but like that general persona, they're pro- they're usually a little bit older. The yeah. guys that are doing it cause they're making a little bit more money. They can go and afford it mid twenties to thirties, to but yeah, young entrepreneurial. So what's, I, I struggle with like, I struggle with guys that promote their lifestyle i struggle with it we don't do any of that i i i see too much of it to be honest yeah i, I agree like i personally don't want to put I, me personally like i don't want to attach my brand to that yeah and i don't want to personally post a lot of lifestyle stuff i want to i i think the the defining factor and i'll maybe maybe you we're going to go into a different point here to me the defining factor is posting things that are happening in your life and i'll give you an example of that versus posting things just to blatantly like i'm posting this because i'm flexing like, yeah this is the culture whatever i can yeah. do that all day yeah right? like like i i i drive an rs5 an audi rs5 nothing crazy it's very simple like 
two door, whatever. But I've had people DM me like, dude, that's my dream car. And sometimes I have to put myself in the perspective of like, that's someone's dream car. Like, I, I just think it's normal, right? So when I go and post it, to me, it's just like me day to day life. I'm just driving. I'm driving 100 miles an hour, 100 because I like driving fast. Um, <laughs> or, or like I'm at the beach. I'm like five minutes away from the beach and, and stuff like that. And I always notice just like the things I'm just posting lifestyle in regards to like this is what I'm doing. Here I yeah. am. Yeah. Like and just kind of like it blends into the content. Yeah. And I don't blatantly do it ever on purpose because it's just like me. That always comes across. And you probably don't even associate that with lifestyle. You probably just associate that with me being me. Yeah. And 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 that's like. That to me is how I always try to help my clients. Is like you're just gonna be yourself, bro. You're not gonna you're not gonna pull up and and rent a, a Tesla Model X and you know a Lamborghini Aventador and the G wagon to record the videos. You're just gonna pick up the phone, <laughs> selfie, and record the videos at your beach house, okay? Yeah. Because that looks cool and people relate to that, even though you think it's normal. Yeah. But if you go and blatantly, you know, I'm oh I'm getting the G wagon so I can post that whatever. Yeah. It doesn't actually make people more money. You know what makes people more money is you getting results for your customers and sharing those results. That's yeah. what makes people more money. People buy solutions. Immature people buy lifestyle. That's how I look at it. So tell me, tell me about that because like, so what are the pros and cons of flexing? Give me your pros and cons of someone who's flexing. So I mean there's tasteful flexing and then there's just flexing. There's just like I drive this car because I drive I kind of just defined it, right? So I think the, the pros and cons are you put a target on your back. That's a con. For sure, um, I think you turn off a lot of serious people yeah. when you do it the wrong way. Yep. If you're just like, yeah, like man, look, I'm tatted up. I got the watch. I got all the cars. Like, look at me, dude. Blah blah blah. You just turn off serious people in general. But you can do that stuff. You can do that stuff in like a funny, like tasteful way, and it works. Yeah. Right. It works if if it's you. So I think the the the, the pros and cons. You know, it, it's turns off the wrong people. Turns off serious people. Um, I think that, you know, in, in general, but here's, here's the, here's the, here's the, the target comeback to that. Here's the comeback to it though. This is what people, this is what people tell me when yeah. I say the same thing. They say it gets views. It might get views. Does it get the views you want though? But I don't think so. I don't think it gets the views you Talk want. About I think that. it makes you kind of look, I think, I think it makes you look kind of dumb sometimes if you overly like blatantly do it. And I also think it gets you a lot of broke people because, because mm. like serious people do Serious people want a solution. Serious yeah. people don't care about the, like driving a car. Serious people want to take care of their families. Yep. People with money want to take care of their families. Yep. People with money want to take care of their businesses. People with money want to solve real problems in the world. Kids and teenagers and younger guys that haven't experienced life yet yeah. want to buy a car. Yep. They want to buy a watch. The, the cars and the watches aren't even that expensive. What is it? A Lamborghini is 200 k Like... Dude, it's it's genuinely not that expensive. You can go rent it for, three, or lease it for three grand a month if you have the right credit score and you have the right funding for it. Like to me, to me, once you know and like you're kind of in the game and you understand, it's it's just like not impressive. Right? I, I think and the, the funny what you're saying, which I love, that. what I love is because this is what you're saying, and I think a lot of guys that are in the digital marketing space and are our age, they're missing the fact that the people with money that need help with this, they're usually not single. They usually have values. Correct. They usually, it's, it's the quiet guy with, the, with a blank social media profile yep. that's quietly raking in 30 million a year, right? And is, like, and is being told, dude, you have to start something with socials. That's the person you want. And, and I, got, I got no problem with anyone going and posting whatever they want. Like, do your thing, get your money. Like, I got no problem with it. I just know from building what I've built so far and like long-term thinking and long-term solutions and where I want my company to go long-term, whether I get a car and post it or not, it doesn't make me more or less money. Mm -hmm. What makes me more money is getting my clients better results and then sharing those results with the public and sharing those solutions and putting out stuff that's super, super valuable for people. And yeah, like I, a couple years ago, I ordered a Porsche 911 Turbo S. Um, but the there was kind of like miscommunication and disagreement between me and the dealership, and I was going to put down far less than what they wanted me to put down, and they were asking for way more, and I just like, I'm not going to do that right now. So I would have had the cool car to like flex or whatever, 
Um, and I, I, I get it. And I love cars. So, like, to me, it's just, like, a, a thing, right? Like, I want to go build uh, – I want to go buy an old Camaro and then build it, like, a, 70, a 70s Camaro and build it, like, modern. Just because yeah. I like cars. It's, yep. it's dope to me. It's cool. Yeah. I don't care about flexing it or showing people. I want to maybe show people because I like it, yeah. right? I think that's – it's it's always about the intention to yeah. me. It's always about the intention. If the intention of I'm buying this car to get views and make money, that's the wrong intention to have, and it's going to come across the wrong way to, the, to serious people and serious people that have money. Yeah. And, and just like you said, the people that have money want a solution, and they just want their problem solved, and they want it solved now, and they don't care yeah. about what you have or what yeah. you do. In fact, to me, like at this point, if I see it, if I see an ad for that, like I'm gonna immediately scroll, just because I know for a fact. Because what I, I've done it, I've like I've clicked on the ad. I'm like I'm really curious. Let me check out the landing page. Let's see what the funnel is like. Let's see what's happening. Let's check out, let's check the lead magnet. Let's check to see what's up. And it's like a hundred dollar product or a hundred and fifty dollar a month subscription yep. product. And I'm like, bro, yep. like there's no way you're making that. Like, well, they are. No way you're because doing what it, it does. You, they are though, because that hundred dollar, that hundred fifty dollar, whatever, it just, it just covers the cost of the ad spend, and then they call you and they pitch you on their consulting product. Basically, you become the time, lead. That's, they how pay, every that's, works. that's the lead. That's the lead. That's it. Yep. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I but I also see like so what what happens? Nick, tell me what what should people do if they don't have the results? Right, they don't they have don't the client have wins. Result. If they don't have the client wins, we well, shouldn't build a personal brand. You shouldn't build a personal brand. That's, I mean, the first thing um, I tell people. I tell people this. If you don't have any wins or anything like that, you just got to go get them, right? So it's like, it, the first thing is, like, how did I do it? I look at how I did it, and it was very seamless. I got skills. That's the first thing. I was good at sales. I could sell people. I understood that. I understood how teams kind of work from, from working at a, a dealership to, to a decent level. They were tried to put me in different departments. I think they were training me basically to be a manager. Um, so that I was in all the departments seeing all the moving parts. So I saw that. I saw team building, saw sales. And then I got really good at growing social media pages and monetizing them to a degree. Didn't have all the pieces, obviously, but I had a, a skill stack. And I could go sell that skill stack in the form of an agency service offer to people that needed it. And that's mm-hmm. it. So it's like, go acquire skills. So, like, honestly, a lot of people should go work for somebody or build their own, like, little thing. Build your own theme page. Build your own little e-com store. Like, do do these little things or go work for someone that can mentor you for a year and then go and, and sell that or document it on a personal brand or do an agency or something like that. That, to me, is just like you, you need skills, and then you can talk about it. And need skills, so you and heard then it, you go you heard somebody, it here and first. then you do it. Everybody go apply to Nick Rogers' DMs to, to intern with him for free for a year. No, I don't have any spots. I don't have any <laughs> <laughs> Heard it here first. Everybody flood it. Everybody go flood it. Uh, um, what do you t- talk to me about theme pages? I, yeah. I I asked you about this in the call once, and I I maybe it's just because I'm I don't get it, and I, I'm it just it's not the kind of content that I, I appreciate. But at the same time, there's at this point you see theme YouTube channels, you see, and most of the content that people get that's that's viral is coming from a theme page. So talk to me about it. Um, What's the benefit? Why is it still relevant, and how can we utilize it for brands? Benefit in what regard? Benefit of, like, what's the benefit of having a theme page or using a theme page for your business? Benefit of having a theme page is, like, once you get it to, like, at scale and you have, like, a network, you Mm -hmm. can put one person in or two people in to manage it for you, and it becomes pretty easy cash flow for you that's, like, autopilot because it's an Instagram page, right? Yeah. It, It makes money pretty easily. Um, and it doesn't cause that much headache. You know, I think the mar- there's a marketing angle, like it's digital real estate and stuff like that. You know, we can use it as a marketing angle, but like at the end of the day, it's not digital real estate because real estate has a lot of tax benefits that this will never have. Um, yeah. You know, cost segregation, stuff like that, whatever. Uh, so, I mean, it's, to me, it's not digital real estate in that regard, but it is digital real estate in the regard that the way people live in real estate and like need a place to live, people are scrolling social media and, and they follow things, and they want something to consume. And if you give them something to consume that is the right thing, you get more views, and in turn, you can put ads in front of those people. And controlling a theme page is super beneficial for someone like me, an offer owner, because I can take all that traffic and I can drive it to the thing that I want to drive it to. So, yeah. for example, let's say 
I mean, let's say you own an e-com brand and you go and start 50 TikTok pages that are surrounded by the brand. That's no different than running theme pages. You're just running a little bit more curated content and it's feeding the brand at the end of the day. That's a theme yep. page in, in, in a sense. It's a faceless Instagram page. Um, so I just think of it as it's traffic that exists that's somewhat targeted generally inside of a niche and you can put good stuff, good stuff in being like interesting content in front of it that is an ad that directs people someplace and you can either collect money for it or you can use it to direct it to your own offers and it's a lot of traffic that can get you traction fast. So me, my Instagram gets banned. What do I do? I start a new one. I start running theme page ads, 2,000 followers. As soon as I start running it, I'm going to keep running it because I just know the game and it's easy and I'll get to like 50K followers relatively fast, probably before the year's over. And it simply happens that way because I have all the leverage. I can test the, the ads that I want to test. I can test the angles on my own theme pages, stuff like that. Yeah. And it's leverage. The person that should start a theme page, there's probably like two people. One, if you're a beginner and you want to learn skills and you want to make some money on the internet, you start a theme page. Or you're at a higher level and you want more distribution, you should either start go buying shadows from theme pages or you should start a theme page because you want more distribution for your already working product and you want to open up a new channel of lead flow. But in the middle, you don't need a theme page. You don't need a theme page if you got a skill just now and you started making money, you don't start a theme page. It doesn't well, make any sense. So say, talk to an online coach who might have an offer is wanting to get leads dedicated to that offer. What is a good way for them to do it? Do you think it's better to run ads or do you think it's better to, to communicate with theme pages? Probably better to, well, it depends. I mean, running, let's say you're buying a theme page, that's a different territory. To me, that's way more scale. Uh, but let's say you are running shoutouts on a theme page, it's basically running ads. You're running ads to get followers to then pitch those followers your product. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's just a different version of running ads. Yeah. Do you think, uh, what about like the repostable content? Is that beneficial? Not really? Kind of? What do you mean, what do you mean by that repostable I, A lot of times there's theme pages that reach out to some of my clients and they're like, hey, I'll repost this post and I'll put it on our theme page and it'll direct traffic to you. Uh, and that's like a pitch oh. for them to then like pay for some kind of placement of just... That's a shout out. Yeah. To paying for a shout out. Um, yeah. That's what we do. That's how we get all of our clients' followers. Interesting. Basically. Interesting. And but we just are those, do you find that, do you find like, those followers monetizable? Like, do you find those are like yep. real people yep. that have money? Yep. You just got to do it right. So like the, a lot of times we'll take an angle that performed well in organic content and we'll cook that angle up in a very viral fashion. Yeah. And we'll place that like one, we, we have a client, Andre, who you probably know. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's a cool dude. Uh, and, and he, an angle we just wrote for him was man reveals, uh, man reveals Gmail secret that makes him nine, 98k a month. Or man reveals untapped Gmail business that makes him 98k a month. He's talking about cold emails. Right? Yeah, we're talking about cold emails. We're pitching cold emails. Yeah, we're talking to an unaware audience. So we target it as the Gmail business, and we're just trying to go in there and it brings in high intent people that want to start a business, that want to do it, sending cold emails. They want to do it with way less risk than starting an average business. They want to send cold emails for business owners. Um, that's how it is. That's how it's done. We have to do it very targeted. And that went and got like 7,000 likes the first time we posted it on a theme page and it drove a couple thousand followers. Um, that's awesome. So for reference, that's, that's like the... How much... So yeah. how much... Uh, there's, there's people that talk to me about and say like, you almost have to be offensive with content. Like you, there's no way to be... To have a viral piece of content that's positive. You have to have some form of hate. I disagree. Comments and have to... Like some people are disagreeing. Some people... Like you have to have... It's almost like most people that talk... Like I, I was talking to, to Ryan McGinn about this, who, who does a lot of content for like high level business owners. And he's just saying like, basically the things that do the best are the things that people are the most angry at, or the things that are most interesting that a lot of people are angry at. You used a word, I, f I forgot what it was here. It was a couple of sentences. Was it, was it offensive? Word, yeah. I don't think offensive is the right word, personally. Okay. I think that it's polarizing. Mm. Content has to be polarizing. People need to have an opinion about it. Yep. Someone needs to say something. Like, like they, 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 we need to, we need to get them to like give their opinion on yep. it. And if we can get them to get their opinion on it, now we're cooking with the engagement. If yep. we can get them to share it, now we're cooking with the engagement. Everything's going shareable and like commenting wise. The more comments you get, the more shares you get, the more views you're going to get. That's just how it works. And it's, it's how people work, right? The algorithm 
Because the algorithm, let's, let's talk about the algorithm for a second and how the algorithm works. Everyone's like, oh, well, the algorithm chooses. No, the algorithm doesn't choose the content. I'm sure there's some conspiracy, whatever, where they boost posts and whatever. We can, you know, that's, nah. that's a whole different story. Nah. I'm sure that they do that. That, that happens. Like, I, I'm sure there's an agenda that's being pushed. But in general, how does the algorithm work for your average post and for your content? It's not big tech banning you or whatever. Your content's just not good. People yeah. aren't sharing it. People aren't commenting it. People aren't liking it. People aren't saving it. But the more shares, the more comments, the more likes you get. In, so they'll share it to a pool of people. And based on the ratio, I don't know the ratio. I don't know how it works, right? They don't reveal it. But based on the ratio of the amount of likes and shares and comments you get, they'll share it to more people. Yeah. And that's determined and about you know, how many in, in terms of that ratio you know, actually like it. And if you actually get people to do it and if people like, are sharing it, liking it, whatever, they'll just show it to more people. That's how yeah. the algorithm works. Yeah. And it'll spread by word of mouth in regards to sharing. So to me, it's not about being offensive. offensive being offensive is a way, be, getting people angry is a way to get views. But to me, the best way to get views is just to put it out there and, and in a way that makes people want to discover something or gives people an aha moment or shifts mm -hmm. someone's perspective. Yeah. If I can shift someone's perspective in a piece of content yeah. that actually is beneficial and helps them, I've done way more for my business than putting out an offensive piece of content that makes people angry. Yeah. And a lot of that times it comes with polarization where it makes some people angry. It makes some people be like, whoa, this is cool. Yeah. And that's typically what I mean by perspective shifting. Some people get their perspective shifted. Some people just get pissed off. Yep. That's typically what happens. So I, I think about it from that lens. I'm, I don't care about making people angry. How can I change someone's mind today? How can I shift someone's perspective? How can I make their life better? Do you think that's the goal for is, is top of funnel content shift someone's perspective and bottom of funnel content to convert? Is that, do you think that's mostly just like let me educate as good as possible? I don't think it's necessarily educate as good as possible. To me, it's more so make people aware. Make people aware that I exist, that this opportunity exists, and this business model and thing exists, etc. And there's different levels of – if we're talking about like top of funnel, there's like probably a couple layers in top of funnel. Top mm -hmm. of funnel can be like general motivation thoughts. That's super, super top of funnel, just making sure people know that you exist. And then a little bit below that is like – top of funnel like you exist and you're also here's some inspiration about my story it's like oh i'm interested like how did you get there like how did you do that yeah and then below that maybe top of funnel is like a little bit more value like here's how you do this thing but it's said in like second grade you know grammar and second grade spelling and, and reading level um that to me is like the layers of top of funnel when it comes to content it's just like there's there's different there's different levels of it yeah do you think uh how does someone be unique in a, in a in a oversaturated space. Because there's a lot of people that are trying to do this. There's a lot of people that are trying to go viral. There's a lot of people that are trying to be polarizing, right? And there's a lot of people that are trying to give value but really just sell their offer. How, how do you stand out as someone that can, like, yeah, impact more people positively without... Because, I mean, to your point, I think, I think in, your, in your lead magnet, you've talked about, I think you talk about like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, you talk about some of these guys, Andrew Tate, people that are like, they're polarizing figures. There's people that hate them. Yeah. There's people that love them. And most people have an opinion, right? Yeah. Which just means they have real estate, which just means there's opportunity to make money if they had an yep. offer. Um, do you think in that sense, like, is it more important to just be relevant with your content? Or is it more important, like, what's, what's the balance between that and just being like, hey, I actually just want to help people? Oh, we're talking, there's, there's an original question, and then I think there's a, a second I, question. I'd rather follow up on that second question. Basically, like, virality, top of funnel content, being relevant versus, like, the slow growth of just giving value and just being consistent with something simple. Most people uh, should go for the slow growth and consistency. I don't think it's just about value. We'll, we'll talk about because Hormozy is a perfect example of this. Yeah. I think what you originally mentioned. Hormozy is a perfect example of this. But like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Tate, whatever, they're characters, man. Yeah. Like Cardone. Cardone's a character to yeah. a degree. You yeah. Know? Like he does he's not thing. real. Gary he's, not a re he's not a real yeah. human being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gary Vee's a character. You know, I don't think, I think actually Gary Vee's real. I think he's real. You think he's a character? I think he's real. He's got, I mean, I think they're all, like everyone's a character. Like I'm a character. Everyone's a character to a degree, right? Like yeah. they, they have, like they got stuff going on. They're funny, whatever. Like, yeah. You know, this discussion wasn't about digital marketing. It was about 
I don't know. I don't know. We can talk about conspiracy theories. I'll talk about conspiracy <laughs> theories all day. Who runs yeah. the government? Stuff like that. Yeah. But like, I, I could be a character in that lens to crack some jokes, whatever. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about serious digital marketing. So I think that, you know, in that regard to go, if you wake up one day and you have never done anything in your life, and you're like, I want to be Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and you've never picked up a camera, it's probably not going to happen, dude. Yeah. Like they were, they were using the camera. They knew how to film things since they were 10. Yeah. And they like kind of got their start on Vine, kind of got a big break, and they're like, cool, we're going to ride this thing because they're yeah. smart business people. Yeah. Um, that doesn't just happen. I think a lot of people think they can just shoot for that. Yeah. And that's not where they should shoot for. They should just shoot for being themselves and seeing where the chips fall and then taking advantage of opportunities because anyone can get to the Cardone, Gary Vee, whatever level. They can. I think Hormozy is a good example of this. Hormozy put out, and th- this comes back to the value piece. How do you share value with an audience? You have to have some unique type of value before. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's talked about lead magnets. Everyone's talked about funnels. Everyone's talked about offers in years prior. Yep. It's not a new thing. But Hormozy went and did it in a way that was so consumable at a mass market level. And it was all given away for free that it was just like, okay, this is the guy. Yeah. I, okay, wow. Well, and you don't, and also, he, there's five years. There's six years of content. But, but the, the key point is, it's not even just that. It's how did he become the guy that was capable of putting that stuff out? He actually did the shit. Yeah. He went and did the shit. Yep. And that's why I feel like our lead mag is so valuable. I, I went and did the shit. You know, Logan, you know, when we originally wrote it, he went and did the shit. Like, it's, we've yeah. done it before. And then we put it out, and people are like, oh, that's the behind the scenes yeah. of the seven-figure social media brand. Whoa. Yeah. Like, I want to do that. Two that makes a lot of sense, um, and that's the that's the biggest key to me is it's like if you're if you're in this space if you're in digital marketing it's like actually doing things. Yeah, I I gotta then, say I gotta say it too because I think like there's a lot of kids and I, I I'm tempted to do this but I think I think the reality everyone's tempted to do this to be honest but don't talk about things you don't have authority to talk about. Don't like. I, I, no one cares about your superlatives unless it's with the backing of a metric, right? No one cares Here's the about thing. it. You can say that all day, but they think they have the authority to talk about it. That's, that's the thing. They think they have the authority to talk about it. So but then they will. I, I think people only have, the, only have the authority to talk about what, like, and I look, Alex says this. He's like, I will talk about being a billionaire when I'm a billionaire. <laughs> you think yeah. he won't put out a hundred billion dollar sales, right? <laughs> like, like if he, if he has the metric, he will absolutely. Alex Hormozzi is a mature adult that knows how to build <laughs> nine figure companies. So of course he's going to say that. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. He's got the humility to say that. You have it. I have it, right? Like we, we get it from an authentic authority standpoint, but the kid that just starts what, what's the um? Oh, I forgot the chart. You know how it goes like up, or maybe, maybe it's it's this side, right? Well, I'm looking. You're yeah, probably yeah, gonna yeah, see yeah, it backwards. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it goes up, and then it's like, oh, I need to learn, and then it, then yeah. it goes. I forgot what it's called. Um, but that is what happens with a lot of these guys. They get in the space. They, oh man, I'm making 20k a month with high ticket sales. I'm gonna start my training program <laughs> after three months, and then and then it's like it's dude, every niche too. There's it's every niche. there's like. There's like way more people that have made way more money in sales. How about you talk to the guy that's in enterprise like tech sales? Yeah. How about you talk to him and see how much money he made yep. a month? Well, it's, and you know, I, clean, that's what I was realizing. You up. Even for me, like selling somebody, creating content, like if I'm a fractional CMO for somebody, I'm going to go rather than be like, hey, kid, that's doing some stuff. Cool. You've had a cool few years. I'd rather go and work with a person that's been doing that thing for 20 years. Because he, his authority can run circles around you, and the statements Correct. we can make can run circles around you, versus you being like, "Yeah, this is how I can sell a 10k a month lifestyle." I, yep. To be honest, if you sell a 10k a month lifestyle, you're gonna attract people that want a 10k a month lifestyle. Which I'm not gonna lie to you, they don't have money. I'm sorry, they don't have it. <laughs> they might be able to buy your $300 course. They're not gonna buy your $4,000 course. I'm sorry, they're not gonna they're not gonna give you a $10,000 a month retainer. I think, I think they do. You'd be surprised what people put on credit cards and what people, you know, finance with a firm and That's, Klarna and all yeah. that stuff now, man. Dumb. You would dumb. be surprised. I've seen the back end of some of these, these dumb. you know. Chargebacks. Yeah. Chargebacks. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, you, it ends up with a lot of people that are unhappy. Yeah. Because they bought for the lifestyle. They didn't buy for the solution. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What is a uh, – what? One, you, one – Yeah, hit, hit me with it. One note on lifestyle. 
Like, to me, the, the lifestyle stuff shouldn't be the main thing. It should just be an added, like, here's who I am. This yeah. is what I do. Like, added factor that boosts you as a person and the trust factor. Yep. That's it. I, I, I can smell someone who's fake in their content from a mile away. It's really obvious. Some, like, some guys trick me. Some guys, I'm like, oh, that guy seems legit. And then I, I've been following him for seven months, and I'm like, ah, never mind. He's, he's full of shit. But like, yeah. it, it comes through whether you're a high-value person that has principles like, that's trustworthy. It's just, and I think like, your content needs to reflect that, and how you approach it needs to reflect it. Just like the same guys, it's like, I can tell who has a copywriter. You can tell who has a copywriter. A lot of them do. That's fine. That's like, I'm not hating on copywriters, but like... Copywriter in what regard? Like ghostwriter? Ghostwriter. Do I have a ghostwriter? Uh, I, you do, but you do also write your stuff. Yeah, a little bit you of do both. both. You do both. I, can, I mean, but it's obvious. I can tell. It's like, I can tell what somebody is doing versus someone that's like just hiring somebody. I think at scale, everybody needs to hire somebody. I'm not hating on hiring copywriters. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying sure. like... When it comes you can to tell. like, you can look, when you can look through you got a eye. and also like copywriters, some of them are good and some of them are just superlative stuff. Some <laughs> of them are just going to take the vanilla top level <laughs> and they're going to write you a, a thread and it's like, that's what it's going to be. And it's like, sweet. All right. But like, you don't get the substance of the story that he's created. You're just talking about something basic. And I, I think a lot of people miss it. A lot of people miss it. And a lot of people are fooled by it, but smart people that have money probably aren't really fooled. Like, I'm talking yeah. about like the money that you want, the B two B money, right? Like, have you done? Have you guys done a lot of uh, high ticket like e commerce stuff? You guys work a lot with social brands, personal brands, but have you guys done a lot with like e commerce? Because that's I'm really I'm curious that. what that what it's a different game completely because you have to you're pitching to your well, pitching to I boards of like committees. Business. It's completely different. Like what's like, like I look at business like this. What's my goal? From a, a lens, uh, we'll talk about that. My original goal was to make 10K a month. Got there, realized it's not enough. Then it's like 100K a month. Got there, I'm like, cool, but for me to do what I want to do at the velocity I want to do it, I need way more. I need a mil a month, and probably when I get there, it's like probably not going to be enough, whatever. But I know for the what I want to do in terms of real estate and investing and things like that and just security purposes, I know a year of a million dollar a month revenue at the profit margins that I, I, I will be at and have right now, I'm good. Like I, yeah. I reached like my initial goal, which is just like money in the investments I want uh, within that year that pays me uh, out monthly. So then it's like I can go work on bigger things without stress, right? Yeah. That, that's like the actual goal right now. Yeah. And I look at it like, do I need to go talk to e-com brands? And do I need to go look at all these shiny object things to do that? No. No, I just continue building the current vehicle I'm building. I get better at it every single day. Yeah. I fill any gaps that I have. You know, I plug any holes, and we keep going. We keep posting. We keep signing new clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We keep getting people great results, Yep. and it happens, and that's can, it. Can I highlight something about you that is I like that I think people should learn from that's listening to this? Sure. Uh, if you've listened to this and you're hearing Nick's story, you've heard that Nick has been doing this for three years. More, but this for three-plus years. And yes, things have pivoted, Right. Partners come and go, offers come and go, but there's an evolution of Nick has been doing this same fundamental thing for people, solving this fundamental problem for people for a long period of time. And a lot of people are going to find Nick's profile, have found people on money Twitter, have found people just on social media, right? And they're like, yep, I'm going to dive in. This is my new side hustle. Oh, sweet. There, there's a way, for, like you hear Nick say, I'm going to do a million a month. And you're like, well, all I want is 10, 10K a month. So I'm just going to follow this and try to get 10K a month. Mm -hmm. The reality is, Half of you people that are listening, try something for two months and then quit. Try something for six months and then quit. Maybe even try for a year and then quit. But I think Nick's a reflection of when you're good at something and you stick at it simply, right? You're like, I'm just going to evolve my simple offer. I'll give you some perspective too. This is the result that can happen. Uh, sorry, I cut you yeah, off. Him, no, I'll good. give you some more perspective too. Try drop shipping for about eight months. And it wasn't going anywhere. But eight months. It wasn't two months. It was eight months. I had like seven stores yeah. failed. Right? And then I pivoted to the IG stuff. And it worked almost immediately after a couple of tries. Yeah. Um, and then I still run the IG pages. And now it's been four years for the agency as of this month, actually. Nice. Uh, Dude, that's that was big. was the first client four years that's ago. That's big. 
That's big. Yeah, I, I think I think people lose perspective on what you can grow if you dedicate four years to it. Because you, you're hearing Nick say it, and it's like a lot of people, a lot of people think all I want is this goal. If it's a revenue goal, if it's a money goal, right? But like Nick, each time he's achieved that goal, has gone into the next thing, the next tier. Ten k. I'm sure that I'm sure the next goal is twenty k, right? And then the next goal was 50K, the next goal was 100K, the next goal was 250 a month, right? And now you're talking, I want to do a million a month, and you're setting targets that are approval of that. The one thing I want to ask you, and I've heard a, a couple people that are in entrepreneurship talk about this. They say real estate's the end game. I get it. I understand it. Is there a reason I, that It's not you the end game. It's not the end game? No, but keep going. What are you saying? I just want to ask you, so like if real estate investment is somewhere you want to go, that's something you want to do, that's where you want to put your money, Right. Is there a reason you didn't just like, if you're good at sales, is there a reason you didn't just like do wholesaling? Is there a reason you didn't just like start there? I look at real estate wealth building and whatnot and whatever as more of a preservation of wealth. Okay. And I, I, I look at it as like, I don't wholesaling, whatever. I know I understand it's a way to make money. House flipping, whatever, understands a way to make money. Buying a duplex understands a way to make money. But I'm not interested in, in those smaller plays personally with real estate. I think it's a lot. My, it was just my calculation that I made at the start. I think it's a lot of headache. Like, I originally dropped out, and I was like, I'm going to be a real estate agent. I'm going to get into real estate and buy houses. That's what I did uh, six years ago. Is it 2017? Is that six years ago? Something like that. That's originally what I did. And I decided at that point that it wasn't – I just need to make money. I need to make money. And then I looked at the internet. I was like, there's leverage here. I have a massive amount of leverage. I can leverage my time, yeah. and it's way cheaper to get started. Yep. And I, I can do it in, in regards – like there's, the profit margins are much, much higher. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take my internet money because I look at it. It's, like, it's just about getting money to use towards investments and use towards vehicles to multiply wealth. So what I'll do is like I look at it right now. I build the, the business that I'm building online, and that always runs. That always is a thing. I take a lot of the extra cash flow. I put a little bit of it into big plays like crypto. Okay, there's a couple little little amount of money that goes into big plays like crypto. Won't talk about that. We can, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to. The rest of it, the rest of the profit. That little I XRP to action. Rate, little XRP action. What do we got? I like XRP a lot. Let's go. Let's go. Um, but but the rest of it, the rest of the profit that I don't use for my personal life and the small percent that I put into crypto, goes into dividend stocks. Okay. The dividend stocks only make if you're making only work if you're making a lot of money. Yeah. But you get you get to the point and then it's like boom, that's gonna pay me 10k a month yeah. autopilot. I don't. I can breathe. I, I can chill a little bit. Like if yeah. things go wrong, I know I have 10k a month going. If I lose all of my business, everything, I know I got 10k a month coming in. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Incredible. Now, I look at real estate as the next play of that. It's like okay, cool. This is set. I got this passive in- an actual passive income. Cool. Real estate to me is how I go multiply bigger and get tax benefits. Yep. And really, I, I'm getting it for the tax benefits, and I'm getting it for the bigger multiplication of it. Maybe yep. you go do some private equity parent, deals. Parent would, company? Oh, yeah. So would you rather go private equity or would you rather go real estate? Because all millionaires are millionaires because of real estate, and the majority of that's my 100 next millionaires point. That's are my, there because of private equity. That's my next point. So I'll probably do a couple private equity real estate deals. I'll probably do a couple real estate deals on my own. Okay. And then I'll probably do a couple private equity real estate deals where I purchase deals with LPs funding yeah. to go build. After I do a couple, like build up my like portfolio of just like I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Awesome. I'll, I'll go because it's the same thing as digital marketing, right? You can't go pitch somebody unless you've done it. But they're gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? But I'll go do that. I'll probably go do if a you have deals. if you have the capital, you can do whatever you want. Yep. Fair enough. But but I'll go do that. And my goal is to get a lot of units because housing will never. To me, housing will never go out of business. Yeah, There's always going to be multifamily. And I'll do that, and then I'll really probably turn my attention to probably. Man, this is me guessing, right? I, I know I'll definitely do all that, but I'll turn my attention to private equity on the Internet and, and regro- or growing Internet companies like I've grown with Launch Socials yeah. and asking myself, what percent can I take here? What, can, what investment can I do? Blah blah blah, all yep. of that stuff. Yep. Um, and that to me is the major wealth play. The other things are like I got my money, put in dividend stocks, put in real estate. I'm preserving my money. It's multiplying. It's compounding. Cool. Now let me go take some massive risks. Let me put my neck out on the line. And now I know 
I'm not going to lose it. Cause at Sports that point, betting. Family. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> at, that point, have, yeah, at that point, I'll have a family. I'll be all set. Everything yeah. will be good, whatever, in, in that regard. And I, I can't go and take the risk of doing some crazy thing where I put my massive net worth on the line at that point. Yeah. If it's, you know, if I have a family and, and whatnot. I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. So that, that's my mindset there. Love it. I love that. And I think I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the target. And I think another thing that I, I hope people benefit from is that when you have a long-term perspective of the things you want to do, the, I mean, this is my favorite quote, the clearer your idea of success is, the sooner you will know if you're deviating from it. So Nick has a clear idea of what success looks like. And anytime he's off that path, it's like, damn, <laughs> I'm off his path. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's inspired. I'm, no, I'm nowhere near any of that. I'm, I'm like baby steps on the journey. But it's helpful to hear because I think I'm similar in, in like the long-term perspectives of the things I want to do. And I think for me, it's more so like the amount of people I want to impact. I imagine there's going to be some, some correlation of that parallel where sure. it's like I'm able to see what you're doing. And I'm, I want to follow in some of those footsteps because I think it's, it's helpful. I think the way you do it is, is impressive. Um, I appreciate that. Here's, here's where I want to close with because I want to be sensitive to your time. So I appreciate you giving me a full hour. Um, of course, bro. I want to close with this. Can you give me something tactical for somebody that is, is saying, I want to get started? Maybe they own a drop shipping or Amazon store or some, they do something that has some relevance. It's not just some kid that's like, I want to, I want to, do, I want to build a brand, right? It's not just some kid that's done nothing. They dropped out of college and they say, I want to build. It's someone that's saying, okay, I, I have success in this and I'm realizing more and more that either coaching offer or just giving value is relevant to do the things I want to do long term. What are some initial steps? I'm talking the first three months. What are some initial steps that you would advise for somebody to get started, to get followers and to, to grow something that give value for other people? And to start selling or no? Let's say the goal is to sell in the next three to six months. Okay. First thing you're going to do is you're just going to, one, you should get the, the free playbook. It's just like everything's in there. Like if I'm going to mention anything to anybody, like I can, I can give that piece of tactical advice here, but it's all in there. Yeah. Right. The, and that's 119 pages, the one we were referring to earlier for anyone that's confused on what I mean by that. Um, but the, the tactical piece of advice that would, in the, in the short amount of time I can, I can give it here, would be, one, get the ideas out on paper. What have you accomplished? Where are you going? What do you want to share? Who do you want to talk to? And, like, what's everyone else in the market doing? And which ones of those do you, like, like, like? Yeah. And, and which ones inspire you? Cool. Now you have, like, a general idea. What are some topics? Then you write some topics out, like, what you want to talk about, stuff like that. And you're like, cool. And you literally just go make it. You literally just go make it and you post it. You pick one platform. Yep. You get ideas. You pick one platform. You go post it. So if it's Instagram, you're posting videos all day on Instagram with pictures and stuff. If it's Twitter, you're just going crazy on Twitter. I will never call it X, by the way. Um, <laughs> Twitter, me. Uh, but you go on Twitter, and uh, you'll just be tweeting all yep. day. Yep. You'll be putting stuff out. And you'll be – the additional piece from that is get inside a community. Yeah. You want to get inside a community. You're not going to get the distribution you want unless you post consistently and then get inside a community and – start talking to those people and they start sharing it and stuff like that. You need to be involved in a bit more yeah. in, in, in that regard. So ideas into posting consistently, you need to commit for at least three to six months minimum, really a year. You should be posting five to 10 times a day if you're on any platform really, because Instagram, maybe two feed posts and then a bunch of stories, right? So it's five to 10 to me. And um, then you get inside a community. Now, if you want to launch an offer, you got to get the product, the, or not the product. The uh, if you want to launch an offer, you got to get the audience first. Yep. To launch an offer, what you do is you go interview the audience. Hey, hey, I'm giving some free calls away. Whatever, I just want to see yeah. like how I can help. Whatever. <laughs> you, you interview them, give them some value, and then you understand the patterns. You understand yeah. the problems that they're facing, what they want, the desires, etc. You talk to 50 people, you know exactly what your audience wants. Then you go build that product. Yeah. You put together a really good offer. And yeah. then you go pitch the same people you just talked to, and that's yep. how you launch an offer. I love it. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I think you can do it too if you if you join a, if you join a mastermind. Um, something something I've done that's been really helpful for me. So like I started my agency. Like I started short form content, long form content, producing it, flying out to people, shooting stuff. Right, loved it. Still yep. do it. But the the thing I that really changed things for me was I went to uh, I joined I spent like eight k on a mastermind, 
and it was with higher level people, higher level business owners, right? And what I would consistently do is I would just hear their problems. And then they would just communicate the same things. And I would be like, okay, I can probably fix that. I can probably fix that. I can probably fix that. And then you craft it. And then those are your warm leads. You have a warm yep. audience that's already needing what you probably can help them with. Um, and I, like, I've paid back that 8K many times over just because I was yep. able to craft the offer, uh, fitting my expertise and being like, okay, how do I fit this in my time? Is this tangential? Is this different? And for me, it was tangential. It was just a, like... I'm giving a fraction of what I do for my clients at a lower ticket level for these people to help them. It's really easy to do that. That can help you like formulate and get your first few clients. And then once you get your first few clients, right, that's so much easier. But Nick, you've also said something that I like, which is saying post like five, 10 times a day. People freak out about that number. But go to this document. Go to, I'll, it'll, be, it'll be linked in the description. Go to this document. It'll sign you up for, 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 their, uh, for their, their newsletter, which I is valuable. That. But the, the benefit of it is at least it allows you to formulate some of these thoughts. It allows you to formulate, okay, how do I post so much content? How do I post that many times a day? What do I talk about? That's most people, like when people are talking to me, it's like, I don't know what to say. I have this offer. I know I help people. I don't really know what to say. And I just tell them, yo, do this. Look at this. <laughs> it's helpful. I appreciate Form, that. Formulate your perspective. Formulate your thoughts. And let's work together to figure out how we can create a system for you to actually make it work. And, and so far for people, that's been super beneficial. It's been super helpful. And I think, uh, I think anyone here that's looking to get started, that's where you should get started because I think Launch Socials does a great job for all levels, whether you're I, – I haven't, I haven't talked to anybody or worked with anybody that's been doing your higher level stuff. I know – I think you've worked with, like, Miles, uh, Flips for Miles, so I've, I've consumed yep. his content. So I, I, loved, I loved some of the stuff that he did on that front. But, like, other things, like – I, I, I know and I've seen the value. I, I, bought, your, I bought your course because I want to see some SOPs. I want to see, like, I want to pay you money. So that was beneficial Appreciate for me because I learned a lot, and I think uh, other people are going to benefit from it. So definitely want to plug it. Definitely want to give value. Um, Nick, appreciate your time. Uh, where can people find you? Where can, I, I know your Instagram just came back. So where, how can people connect with you? Um, well, it did not come back. We got, we got the, no? the secondary one. No, no. that's, a, that's okay. a brand new one. Okay. Brand new okay. one. We're trying to get the, the name over, but I guess it's Permaband. Okay. Um, uh, I'm posting main, main platform right now because the IG band is Twitter at Nick N I C K R G R S abbreviation for my last name Rogers. Um, YouTube just starting up. We're about to drop the first YouTube video back the day, and like we're gonna go crazy with it. Let's go. Um, real Nick Rogers. You can just search me up Nick Rogers social media. It'll pop up. Um, and then additionally, you can find me on Instagram, which really will be my main platform along with Twitter for posting because it's just like what I do uh, at NJRGRS J is my middle initial so it's Nick J Rogers you know? love it um, it's the abbreviation but love yeah it, dude. cool awesome you know where to find me appreciate you guys. having me on dude yeah this thank you great. everybody and uh, yeah share this with somebody that can benefit from it okay appreciate you guys see you next time Can't slow us down.